Hi everyone. So in this class, we're going to talk about web and app design principles and specifically how to actually make your web uh, pages and your apps look good, right? Uh, so that they're engaging and that people come back and continue to use them. So what is web design? Uh, web design is really the process of creating all the visual aspects of the interface, the layout, the colors, the images, the logos, uh, the particular type and font that you're using, right? And the design elements, the, the real, the assets that make it a pleasant place to be to a large extent, right? Um, and the first thing you need to think about when you're creating your website or your app is how to create a visual identity. And the basic idea behind this is that you really want to put together a digital style guide that could really kind of des describe what all the different consistent aspects of your web are going to look like. Almost all uh, companies, organizations over a certain size have such a digital style guide. Um, in fact, um, many of them make them publicly available, some of the larger ones, so that even people who aren't directly responsible uh, for putting up contents can, in fact, see what they are and use them in their own presentations or use them in small websites, uh, their own apps, etc. So, for instance, NC State has its own uh, digital style guide that you can access. Uh, I just Googled, you know, NCSU digital style guide, and one of the first things that came up was this page. Uh, that talks about all the different uh, brand rules and guidelines that they have. And they'll have examples of logos you can put up there, um, what exact color numbers to use, things like that. What this does is it helps create a consistent visual identity for the university uh, such that the experience is similar and engaging no matter where you are on the university website. There are three main uh, design goals to consider when designing your web and your app. Um, first is, uh, you know, in general, is to put your strategic content, your most important content, in, in the, the, the place that's going to be most visited by the users. Usually that just means above the fold, right? And the fold is kind of the imaginary line that exists on a web page below which the average user is gonna to have to scroll in order to see any content, right? So if you think about from a mobile device, right, this is like the first thing you see when you bring the page up and then you have to scroll up or scroll, you know, scroll up to see additional content. That, that first thing you see is called the above the fold. If you're thinking about it from a desktop, right, it's whatever you load up and then you have to like um, scroll down in order to see more things, right? Second aspect is consistency. Um, you want the content to be consistent throughout the different presences. And the third aspect is white space. You want to make sure that there's plenty of white space so that people can see the content in the correct uh, places, right? That it's easy to scan. There's a lot of research out there showing that the vast majority of consumers don't read web pages in detail. They scan for what they want and they click, scan for what they want and click. And white space really helps those aspects jump out, those aspects where you want people to click on to jump out. So just to visualize the, the fold a little bit, right? We have an example here from Folk Media, right? Where um, they basically indicate that on their website, they think that about this part of the page is above the fold. And so most of their important content is what they're gonna put there. The reason why you wanna put it above the fold, obviously, is because it's the part where the user doesn't have to do anything to see the content, right? So they can make a quick decision whether they're actually able to engage in that spot or if they need to look at a different website. The user should feel uh, like no matter where they are on the page or on the website, that they are in the space of the brand, right? You can imagine how weird it would be, for instance, if you were to walk into a Starbucks store and in one corner had that nice, relaxing Starbucks coffee house feeling, and in another corner there was kind of bright colors and, and um, a, you know, a party going on and loud noises. Uh, and that would you feel very inconsistent. Well, the same is true for your website, right? The pages should all look fairly consistent and similar to each other. The tone of the pages should be somewhat similar to each other. Uh, without that, you're gonna cause cognitive dissonance in your, um, in your consumers, and you're gonna cause them to be less likely to engage with the website overall. The website should feel like a physical space where everything looks consistent and not out of place with each other. 
So I think CNN, for instance, does a great example of illustrating the white space guideline, right? Uh, so they, this is a headline from a couple days ago or the page from a couple days ago when uh, they were looking at all the different uh, claims about Trump and uh, the uh, uh, Comey's testimony, right? And as you can see, right, there's definitely gaps in between all these articles. It allows kind of the headlines to really stick out Right, um, and there's really kind of a clear, obvious place as to where you could click. If that white space wasn't there, right, these things would kind of run together and they wouldn't stick out as much, right? And even though many of these are very similar to each other, for instance, there's a headline here about Rockefeller dying, very different than the rest. If they were all crammed together, it'd be less likely to see that. So keeping the white space separate really allows uh, for the user to make a more informed uh, decision about what the content of the page represents. Right, and what kinds of the content they're interested in looking at. So let's talk a little bit specifically about some of the elements that you're going to have to decide upon for the website design. One of them is obviously the colors that are going to be used. And people interpret colors in very specific ways. They have a context for a lot of those colors. Um, and I'm not going to spend too much time on this because there's entire classes that we taught on this. But those colors also have brand connotations, right? So black and green, to go back to the Starbucks example, is the colors of the scheme that they often use. And part of the reason why is because they want to promote this idea of a relaxed environment, a toned down environment, right? Uh, where people can kind of sit down and have a cup of coffee and maybe talk to their friends and, and things like that. Dunkin' Donuts, you know, on the other hand, uses a very different color scheme. They use pink and orange, right? And their motto is, you know, the U.S. runs on Dunkin', on Dunkin' right? And the idea is, right, that they really get you active and energized. And that's really what their motto is about. They want someone coming in, grabbing a cup of coffee, and leaving. They don't need, like, them to linger. They don't need them for to sit around, right? And pink and orange kind of highlight those attributes more than the black and green of Starbucks does, right? Um, and so you need to keep those kind of connotations in mind as you're working through it. Uh, there are also some standard associations people have with different colors, right? So red, for instance, is often associated with warnings or errors. And so you can use that to your benefit, right? Like if someone fails to fill out a form right, often the incorrect aspect is highlighted in red, right? Green is often a good indication that they did it correctly or that this should be a next step. So buttons to go on to the next step might be examples that you'd see in green, right? Blue is often used to indicate a link, uh, but many now change that default, right? That has evolved over time. Now often it's just a color that contrasts with whatever the background color is. So for instance, in the NC State examples that I used here and in the UX class, um, lecture, right, they use red to highlight it, right? And that works fine because all the other text is in black and white and the red kind of sticks out. Moreover, it doesn't really fall into this problem of confl conflating with warnings and errors because NC State's, one of NC State's brand colors is red, and so they're able to use that to their benefit in that experience. 